Good morning guys, my name is Trevor. Welcome back to the Arctic Vet YouTube channel. This is Avi. Oh, she needs a transmission today. We, it might not be just today. We're going to be showing you how to swap a transmission in your driveway with some very basic tools because that's just how we roll around here. So, so let's roll that intro and get into the video. First thing, disconnect the battery. We don't have to worry about being electrocuted or shocked by anything. So then we're just gonna kind of stuff this out of the way. Try to at least. Um, there we go. That'll work. All right, battery's disconnected. Now we can lift the car up on its jack stands because that's what we'll be using. Got a, a couple jack stands for the front and a couple for the back. I'll show you guys where I'm going to be putting those since we will be removing the entire rear end. Before I get the back up, I'm going to break the lug nuts loose on each side of the rears because we less weight, take the wheels off, be a little easier to do it. All right, so there we go. We used a little car jack back here on the cradle. And then I was able to use my big three ton jack on the cradle to get it up high enough to put our little rubber pieces in place, which will protect the car and sit on top of these lifts on both sides. And then up front, we have these two right there. And that third one is actually just temporary right now. It's not even holding anything, but that will be holding the torque tube once we get to that point the front of the torque tube so here we go now all right now on the back of the car we're going to be taking off the lug so got a little ooga dooga here i'm going to take them lug nuts right off now we'll take the wheel off I'm going to set you guys down and grab that wheel off there. Alright, so now we've got the wheels taken off on both sides. There you can see. And I went ahead and I put the wheels just under the side of the car. You know, just as an added protection. We added another jack set of jack stands just in case too. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remove our brake caliper. We're going to take that guy off, set it over here to the side, and then the real fun begins because we start taking everything else apart, making sure our brake lines are all free, the wires are free. We have to remove all the wires and the brake lines from the cradle under here completely so that we can drop it down. And I found a way we can do it without taking out the torque tube, so that's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to that because I really didn't want to have to tackle it. Now we don't. Let's get to taking off the caliper and then everything else. Alright, so those, the brake caliper bolts right here, they are a 15. I'm going to screw them back in. But as you can see, I've got this thing set in here with the fuel. That's where the fuel tank is at. And so it's just sitting there, but I have it bungee cord up to hold it up. That way it's not just dangling by your brake line. That's a big thing that you want to do. So I'm going to get both these 15 millimeter bolts screwed in a little bit. In both spots for the brake caliper there. We may do a brake job while we're down here. May as well. Anyhow, the next thing that we're going to do is be taking the upper control arm we're gonna break these guys out take them out and then we'll get these two bolts there let me figure out what the sizes are real quick so for your upper control arm bolts they are an 18 millimeter and I just I was able to break them hand break them free with my hands not really not really my hands but you know just a hand tool no power tool needed for that I already got that one out next we'll be doing those which 
I believe are a half inch. So I'll double check that. Let's get this out and free the upper control arm. At some point it gets loose and you just wiggle it out. All right, so now that we got the control arm out of the way, I went ahead and pulled it towards me like that, pushed it out. And then with an extension, you can reach back to that back one and get it. This front one's a whole lot easier to get out though. So we'll get those out, go to the next step. All right, so something to be careful of is watch your wires here and your e-brake. So I am going to take this plug off. That's unplugged. And now we just have to unclip the e-brake, which kind of gets you guys a good view of that. I don't know. That, that guy right there, yep. That's it, we just gotta get it out of that part right there. And then this will be free and out of the way. All right, so to free the e-brake cable, you just have to push in these little tabs. So I used some little pliers, just push those in, and then I was able to pull that out. And now that is completely free and not gonna be in the way. So we're just gonna tuck it in over there like that. All right, for the next thing, we're going to pull the axle shaft out. So I've got a nice long pry bar here that I'm gonna stick up under there you guys see it right there and we're gonna put it on right inside the middle of that drive shaft axle shaft and I'm using my foot to try and push on it but I may have to get up under here and actually do this a little different with a rubber mallet I figured I'd give it a shot first see what happened that's the next step. If I don't push the button again, right up there, that's the axle shaft coming out. Right there. So pry bar that I stuck in. Let me show you guys. I was able to do this without having to get my rubber mallet out, but I stuck my pry bar it's kind of hard to show you, but I stuck it right about there, pried right on it, and it finally popped free. So now we can come back here and you can just easily slide that out. So I'm gonna go outside here now. Sit up. And we should be able to pull that guy out the rest of the way, just like that, bingo. All right, so we want to go ahead and get that guy all the way out. I'm trying to zoom in there so you guys can see that. It is completely out now. And the way to do that is, oh, <laughs> I pulled this up just a little bit and then use my other hand to pull this back, compress it, and that popped it completely free of the differential. So now we I believe once I get all these wires, I want to double check all my wires, make sure that they're not hooked to this subframe at all. And if they are, I'm gonna disconnect them. But then this subframe should be ready to drop as soon as I get the other side done. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll go to the next step. All right, the next thing that we're gonna to do to make life easier is remove part of the exhaust. So we're gonna go up to those loosen those break it free unhook what we need to unhook up here remove this one and then all the way back so we're gonna do that on both sides these happen to be a 16 um, and I've been lucky enough to break the bolt free and then just loosen the nut on the back by my my fingers so it's kind of hard to see but there's one nut back there all right so now we've got the exhaust partially out. Ours is uh, welded <laughs> together back there so we can't get it all the way out yet. But that gave us a ton of access to all these cobwebs which we will be getting to soon. 
so there you go there's you guys a good view what we're gonna do now is loosen these two nuts they're an 18 millimeter I'm gonna be using a hand tool for that just to prevent any potential stripping looks like I'm gonna have to get a bigger 18 a deep socket because this isn't gonna cut it but it is an 18 so get those two and continue on all right so our next step is we're gonna remove this black cover may need to get a flathead screwdriver under there that gives us access to access to what I believe is a 15 millimeter 15 millimeter bolts holding on the torque converter and we will have to spin this guy I'll we'll have to spin him and break the uh, break them loose one by one so let's go ahead and do that all right now we've got the torque converter bolts out I put the uh, little covers back on just so they're out of the way but now we need to go ahead and take off of that gear shifter right there and then unplug these two make sure that the wires up above are disconnected from the transmission and then over on this other side of the transmission we need to make sure that we have any we got that plug right there it's kind of there you go that one there unconnected disconnected and anything up there that may be plugged disconnected as well and then we can drop this rear end so that's the plan it's dark out now but we're still going all right so we got our plugs undone but we had a casualty our, our plug end broke off so up there you can kind of see them right there yep those are that's the gear shifter selector and it's fried because this this glue this electric grease after 20 plus years that grease becomes glue so i don't know maybe maybe adding a little heat to these before doing this would help i honestly not sure ours broke luckily i'm pretty sure the new transmission has one but now we can there's one clip right there i see that i need to take off for the wires to be free and then we'll be able to drop everything down and continue on all right so it's super night time out here y'all it's really dark that's one of our nuts that we need to get and then there is our second one right there there are two more on the other side identical locations however before you lower this make sure you've got a jack supporting the entire cradle from the let's say the front side to the rear side that way it will hold it steady while you loosen those but also um, it won't just fall and drop on you or hurt anybody so uh, we're gonna get ours supported with a 2x4 running from one side to another currently it's not there but we'll have one that runs from this side over to there and then put the jack in the middle and kind of balance it in the center and then we will begin loosening those and lowering this. Those nuts right there happen to be a 21. Thank you, dear. She's watching out for us, guys. All right, so there we go. You guys can see that it is dropped down. We do have it on a jack with a board spanning across the front and the back, but the front's not touching it, so we're just gonna let it down nice and slow. And then double check as we go that all the wires that need to be disconnected from the subframe are. That way we're not pulling anything, any wires, breaking any wires, any brake lines, anything like that. We're just going to do a nice double take, see what happens as we go down slowly. Here we go, guys. All right, so for our 97, we actually went ahead and removed the brake line there because it had a lot of tension coming down. 
and I discovered that the reason for all that tension is because the brake I don't know I don't know if that's the master the uh, master cylinder that's what I want to call it um, this pump is not in the same location on newer Corvettes or what but we also up there you can see those lines they're connected and I just disconnected it from there so they're actually loose up in the front as well did that for both sides the nuts that hold in that brake line right there is a 10 millimeter but we also have this little guy right here that we're going to disconnect and I believe it was a an eight millimeter let me double check yes that guy is an eight millimeter so we're gonna break it free just like that and remove that wire so then we should be able to continue dropping it down this is why we're dropping it down slowly looking over everything making sure everything is cool because the last thing we want is to ruin a whole bunch of wires from dropping it too quick it's dropping it yeah. all right so now we know why <laughs> what you got to do with the brakes you actually do need to uh, bungee cord up your caliper still and then get the brake line i hope you guys can see that around the axle shaft there and then actually bungee up this thing too i don't i can't think of what it's called however to get it off there's a nut right there a nut right there and then one more right here and those are all a 10 millimeter as well and that will keep your brake lines um all intact and everything okay and out of the way so good to know I hadn't run into that like in a, in a previous video or anything so there you guys go hope that helps now I believe we can drop this all the way down so we're gonna try again and see what happens oh there we go we got her free she's out dirty she's dirty look at all these rocks on there oh my gosh before we put this puppy back in we're definitely gonna wash it down somehow and then we'll come back and as you can see, I don't have the transmission or differential support at all. So I'm going to grab one of these jacks from up front, that little red one right there in the middle. And I'm just going to put it up here just for a little support while we go get the other jack. Because it's it's a little bigger than that. A little better. Alright, so now we got our... This is a, like an ATV jack. So it's flat on under there. That is what we're going to use to get the transmission and the differential out so what we're gonna do first is get this jack out of the way that I just put there for temporary in case support then we'll get this jack put under there get ready to lift up I'm gonna move this one to the front of the car just in case it decides to tip which being on six jack stands it shouldn't but you never know. I'd rather be safe than sorry. It is like 9.30 at night, almost 10. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, for our last hoorah here, we're gonna get the transmission bolts from the torque tube. So you guys can see, there's one, I'm trying to point them out, it's a flashlight. There's one, two, that's on the top. This is on the driver's side, three, four, and over on the passenger side, which I gotta move my. Give me a second. On the passenger side, we gotta go through a whole cobweb. <laughs> we'll get that cleaned out. But there's another one. And there should be one more right there. There is one right there where my socket is at. And they believe that they are all 13 millimeters. And then we will get our 16 millimeter transmission lines removed from there and make sure all the plugs like this one here and any of the extras are taken off but first let's get rid of some cobwebs <laughs> all right so we've got all the bolts out 
Um, you can see the top two out, that third one there, fourth one, or I guess that's the same one. And then that one right there is pretty dang tricky, but I went ahead and loosened my transmission lines. That gave me a little more play. Last thing we need to do, make sure the wire loom is completely disconnected, which there's one plug here. I'll just pull that off. And then it looks like it might be bolted into that on yours. Mine's just hooked in. Because this isn't the first time the transmission's been out, but it's the first time I'm doing it. So, anyhow, um, let's go check the other side, make sure everything's ready. And we should be able to pull the transmission backwards just a hair and then slowly drop her down. All right, guys, there we have it. It is out. And we got, just got that dangling by the the uh bungee cord there that's the trickiest part is getting that pulled this way so we actually disconnected the passenger brake line from up here and was able to get enough play to pull it to one side over towards the driver's side and then slip this beauty right here out of the way and we have a lovely lovely mess now so that's cool it's always nice and now we need to take off this bolt that bolt there's one here there is one tucked way underneath there somewhere and then one right there so let me figure out what size those are and show you guys how to do it all right so these top two bolts were a 13 millimeter these are a 15 millimeter and looking <coughs> Oh, ah, excuse me guys, thank you. So those top two there are a 13, that is a 15. Then there is one nut down here that's tucked in that is a 15. I'm sure that's a 15, haven't found it yet, but I'll double, I'll double check on those. And this one is a 15 as well, so 13, 15, and we're double checking those. Whew. All right, now we got our transmission and differential put back together. They're ready to go back in. So this time, instead of using two jacks pulled out, we've set the bad jack, which the problem is, is it doesn't like to go down because of the little, this little thing just never works right. So it'll work perfect for this because we'll get it under there, jack it up, slide it into place, bolt it on, be ready to put everything back together. So, let's go, baby. All right, there we go. Transmission swap done, everything's working. And now, I need to fix my key fob. But, we can officially drive Miss AV. few more gauges to fix because it says my coolant's low but man did I miss the sound of that <laughs> yeah buddy oh man no so like I said the I need to change fix the coolant sensor because it shows that all the time which I know it's not my oil pressure gauge over there yeah that one needs changed too but trans temps are down there are no leaks Whew, man this is exciting now we just gotta drive it for a little bit then we can uh, actually get back to driving the Corvette like like a Corvette's driven it's kind of full right now took this puppy to football yesterday so our next thing is I need to actually repair this completely so I'm gonna do that to my old one instead of this one because that one's completely dark can't see it at all so I got to repair that and then we're going to take this entire piece out remove this stereo buy a new stereo rewire it and then after all of that, 
and swapping out the headlight gears because they're both uh this one over here is bad so i may as well do the other one too with some brass gears get some new lights all the way around i think av will be done man i'm so excited so if this video helped you guys out smash that thumbs up don't forget to click the red subscribe button we will catch y'all in the next vlog have a blessed day and god bless y'all don't ever give up god is here with you yeah you are a child nothing but love is true just got a fix of you keep your eyes on the prize that's life everlasting only through jesus christ he came